And we're live. Today we're here with Kara Kendall, the author of the book Organizing Your Home. And I'm really excited to be having this conversation today because we're going to learn how you go from clutter and back. So please help me welcome Kara Kendall. How are you today? I am fine. How are you? I'm very good. We are driven with today's show by the book Organizing Your Home. I know this is a real inspiration for a lot of us. Will you share with us how this book came to be? I will try. Okay. I uh, have dealt with clutter all my life. And I started joining Facebook groups about hoarding and clutter and how to deal with it. And, and I got interested in fixing my problem by listening to others with their problems. And then that led to the book so that I could possibly share some of the research I did and some of the information I found out about myself in dealing with the clutter. So did you always experience clutter or is this something that just happened as life got busy? Uh, No, I've always lived in clutter. My mother was a clutterer. If there was a vacant space on a table, it had to have something on it. (laughs) So there was clutter everywhere. And I just grew up with that and it just stuck with me in my own life. I was a single mother and I was raised in three girls who have, I have to say, turned out very well repulsed by my clutter. (laughs) So they're all very good housekeepers and take care of their homes. And, And I'm still learning, even though I've written the book and it has lots of information in it because I did tons of research. But it It has helped me understand, and I hope it can help other people understand. So for those of you that are just joining us, I want to say hi. I'm so glad you guys are here, and I want to share with you Organizing Your Home by Kara Kendall, and we're here with the author today, and we're kind of doing a deep dive into how one goes from hoarding and clutter to writing a book on organization, (laughs) because this is huge. I mean, this is a huge leap of going from what we have lived with to coming up with answers and solutions. So I want to say hi to everybody that's joined us. Thanks so much for being here. So I'm curious, a single mom raising three kids and you're in a house, life is super busy and you live amongst clutter. And this is something you learned from your mom. And so growing up in the house with the kids, was there always kid clutter and toys and shoes and clothes? And there was lots of kid clutter from two of my girls but one of my girls has always been clutter free her room she wanted clean my other daughter her room was full of dr pepper cans and clothes and shoes and i just shut the door (laughs) and that's how i dealt with it at the time because life was so hectic but now that i'm older I don't want to leave my mess that I grew up with and that I've dealt with for years to my daughters to deal with. So that's that's initially what inspired me. I looked around one day and I said, I can't I can't pass this on. It's not fair. So here we are. Is there some- later? <laughs> Well, and, and you don't just go from uh, my house is messy to having a book. There had to be some steps along the way. Oh, there was a lot of steps. I joined a lot of Facebook groups about clutter and organizing. And and I talked to the people there and I found out what their issues were and how they were dealing. And then I was trying to learn to deal. And I did a lot of research online. And uh, so when you were doing daughters, research. When you were doing research, did you stop and then say, okay, this is a great idea. I'm going to go practice this in my house and see if I can make that work? Yes. And then I wrote it down. And by the time I had a list, I have always really wanted to write a book. So I thought, this is perfect. And who knows if it'll do anything or not. But if it helps me, 
maybe it'll help somebody else. And that was that was the end purpose of the book. One of the to things, try to pass on some of the things I learned. One of the things that's interesting about your process is it's easy for us to accumulate things. And it seems like you've made a transition from collecting things now to creating intellectual property, which is the book. And right. Uh, right before the show started, you were telling me that you're working on your next book, which is a child's book. And right. I love the fact that you've moved from just collecting material things to now online and intellectual property things. Well, and I enjoyed writing the organizing book so much that uh, I wanted to do something else. And I was thinking about what I like, what I like to learn about. So the children's books are as much educational as they are entertainment. Well, and you mentioned that growing up, your one of your daughters was tidy and the other two were not. Was Correct. there any conflict with between the, the girls about keeping a clean room or a messy room? Or did it interfect, interfere with how you were raising the house and having it just be busy and hectic all the time? It interfered with them because they shared a room. And my mother was living with me at the time. And her solution, one day she was fed up. She didn't want to hear them fight anymore. She took tape and tape down the middle of the room and said, this is your side, this is your side. You can do what you want, you can do what you want. Her mistake was when she did that, she taped the neat daughter away from the door and the messy daughter wouldn't let her go to the door. So for a day or two, she was kind of stuck in her room. Mm. And then I said, this is not working. You have to let her out and you have to let her back in. <laughs> so after that, they they made negotiations over the door usage and coming out to go to the bathroom and those kind of things. It was kind of hectic and kind of a mess, but we all worked on it together and it calmed down. Well, I love the fact that it was a, a, a process. Yes. You guys were looking for solutions because I think that's where all of us are. Uh, we are all at different stages of clutter in our lives. But I think as long as you're actively seeking solutions, I think it opens doors for conversation and doors mm -hmm. for like right now. Um, I know that your kids are really proud of you having just released this book yes. and where they've seen you struggle with clutter and hoarding for your whole life for you to make this turn of events. This is huge for you to then do some research and go into Facebook groups and say, okay, I, I learned something new. Let me go practice it and put it into my life. And then your kids watching you, like, tell me what their reaction was when you told them you were writing a book on organizing. Well, at first, one of them laughed out loud because she knows me <laughs> and she knows how I've lived and what our lives are like. So she thought it was hilarious that I picked that topic to write a book on. The other one was very happy for me and thought, I'm learning, so okay. And, and have she's they... the organized child, so. So she was happy with your progress. Yes, but the other one laughed out loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's fine, that's on her. She's probably reading it now to her kids to try to train her kids on how to Here's what grandma teaches, you know? Well, and she said she needed it. So she has been reading, which so is good for me. The process of you writing a book, I know that it was a journey and it didn't happen overnight. Tell me no. a little bit about the moment where you decided, wait a second, I, I, I realize I don't want to leave my mess for my kids and I need to do something about it. Tell me about the moment when you decided to take it to the next level and write a book and then say, okay, I'm going to release this to the world. And it's available now on Amazon. So this is this is a real thing that's available now. We can actually go and buy this today. And so if we're, we're taking a look at this, tell me what that moment was where you're like, you know what? I'm going to make this for real and I'm going to make this lifelong commitment to this. Well, it was after joining some of the Facebook groups and hearing people having trouble with 
where to begin? Where do I start? How can I do this? It's such a big problem and such a big issue. So the book, in my mind, was to break that down. And I said, just start. Just do a junk drawer. You don't have to do anything else today. Organize a junk drawer. Just one. And you're going to feel so good that tomorrow you're going to want to do another drawer or a room. And I said, it just keeps building and it makes you feel better. And at the end of each chapter, I try to put something positive forward to make them more inspired to keep going. A positive thought or a statement. Um, I've written a book. Actually, I've written a couple of books and it is not easy. And no. so decluttering your house and then writing a book on organization and following through on cleaning your house and then following through on finishing a book and then getting it out to market. <laughs> That's a lot of commitment. So the what marketing did... part's been the hardest for <laughs> me because that's not me. I just don't do that. But how, how did you stick through to your commitments? Because it's so easy to give up. Not for me. I just never had had this commitment. Now, I'm a commitment person from the time I was young. So that part for me was easier than coming up with the idea. But once I did, it's like, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> so did you keep it to yourself while you were writing it? Or did you go tell all your friends, like, so they could inspire you and no. watch it coming? Like, what was your process? I wanted to wait and see how I did. And I would get reviews from friends on a chapter or what do you think about this? Or should I reword this? Because I was never a writer. So I needed input. And by getting people to talk me through it, it kept me motivated. And it was mostly my husband, I have to admit. He was, he was great. Can you read this? Yeah, I'll read it. <laughs> He's read the book two or three times. Speaking of motivation, I want to say hi to our friends. We've got Jilly Bean here today. Hey, good afternoon. We've got hi. Muppet 929 here with a bunch of little smiles Hello. and emojis. We've got A. Rashi that says, yes, actively seeking solutions. Every little bit helps. We've yes. got Sarah from Michigan. Hello from Michigan. Hi, Sarah. I just love it with the support that we get from this group because the people that have showed up here today are well-wishers and they want to see you succeed. And I love that because there's a whole collective group of people that have been jumping in, especially in our clutter groups that have been inspiring each other. And when That's we have our, our Saturday donation, where we take our stuff to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army and we drop it off, there are a whole bunch of people that are like giving little clappy hands and you got this and words of encouragement. And so it means a lot. So I, I love the fact that you went beyond just joining a Facebook group because that's 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 awesome that you did that. But now writing the book, you just mentioned that you have a husband. And so mm -hmm. what was your husband's role in supporting you in writing a book? Anytime, anytime I needed a proofreader or a critic, he was there. He would read it. He would give me suggestions on how to change it around a little, make it more understandable. But I learned a lot doing this book. So I'm looking forward to many more. Well, I'm so proud of you for doing it. But let's go Thank back you. to where you were young and you said you mm -hmm. got your hoarding tendencies from your mom. What kind mm -hmm. of an environment did you grow up in? I grew up on a small farm in Tennessee. And our house had no running water. And so no toilet. Our, we had an outhouse. Wow. <laughs> and she worked at the shirt factory. My dad was a farmer, tobacco farmer. So they were both always busy. So from the time I was little, I just remember there being stuff 
everywhere. <laughs> in our kitchen, we had a wood stove. And she cooked on that. And of course, my job when I got old enough was to do the dishes, which I hated <laughs> and still hate. <laughs> Even though I have a dishwasher, I hate it. But when you grow up in that environment, that's what you see as normal. And it just was always normal to me. And I can see now where my children probably would have been more proud to have their friends come over if the house had been neat and clean, if there hadn't been so much stuff around. But I have had a very full life, and there are a lot of things that I have that I intend to keep. So it's not my book is not about minimalism. It's about doing it to the point that it makes you happy and finding your own style in uh, decluttering and, and do it at your own pace. Don't wear yourself out saying, I got to do it in a month or two weeks or whatever. I said, find your own pace and just set goals and Every time you set a goal, remember you're going to have incidences where you don't make it, but don't give up. And that's what I've done, is I don't give up. You said growing up, it was normal to have clutter. Yeah. So how did you ever come on to the thought that maybe it wasn't normal that most people have clutter? Uh, From visiting friends when I got older. And seeing their homes nice and neat and everything clean. and It's just something I figured out, I guess, over time. My sister has always been very neat, clean, and uncluttered. And I don't really understand how she and I grew up so differently being <laughs> in the same family. But... She's the opposite of me in a lot of things. And we've discovered that because now I've moved back in with her because her husband died a couple of years ago. So I'm here for support, my husband and I. And well, it happened. I lost a husband in 2008. I'm sorry. And his that. biggest complaint was we needed to have more company so I would keep the house clean. <laughs> Are you one of those uh, that families that complaint. when company came over, you'd hurry and you'd clean everything to make it look tidy? You hide yeah. everything. No, you don't clean it. You hide it. <laughs> <laughs> hide it in another room. Well, you know, I'm I'm also one of those families. So, and I learned this from my mom. Somebody's coming over and you hurry. My mother has these big drapes, like you pull a drape over and it will hide stuff, right? Well, my yeah. mother is coming for a visit. And so my instinct is like, I got to hurry and clean the house. But my mother would like peek behind the curtains, like, what are you hiding? You know? Yeah. So, that so only you works. really have to clean. <laughs> I, ha- I really have to clean for real. Well, and I have to now that I've moved in with her because she is neat and she is clean. And she expects you- that. She's a lot older than I am. She got married when I was four. Oh, wow. And, I want to hear that. My, just, a, um, just a second. I want to say hi. We have a uh, hello, uh, Angela and Carrot, and this is from KSVA. Julie Bean says, that's key to making it last. Go at your own pace and your own style and not dictated by others. Um, Sally you. K says, hello. I'm so proud of you too, Kara. Hello, Sally. Um, hi, it's so Sally. great that you guys are here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so when you yes. were four years old, go back and take me to back to that time if you can. Mm, that's when I just thought mess was natural. And when my sister got married, she moved into an apartment and it had carpet. I had no running water and we cooked on a wood stove. So I thought she was rich she had <laughs> because carpet. she had she's carpet. Rich. There <laughs> yeah. you go. But she's always been neat and tidy and I guess she was rebelling against my mother and I was accepting it as the way to be. Well, now at some point, and this is kind of a turn of events, your mother came and stayed with you. 
Yes. And then she, she makes she was a tape, ill and she, she makes tape down the middle of the girls, the, the, their bedroom to say, you stay on your side and you stay on your side. So did she learn how to tidy up at some point along the way? No. Oh, I would come home from work some days and she had made a pie and there was flour from one end of the kitchen to the <laughs> other. <laughs> so she never learned that she did that to stop the fighting. She didn't so, like them arguing all the time. So she had communication skills, but not organization skills. Right. And so did I didn't she, learn any of that from her, really. Did she ever figure it out while she was alive? Or did she just, that was just the way she lived forever? And then well, y'all figured it out? Well, she got sick and had a stroke. And she lived with me then. But of course, she was in a wheelchair. She couldn't maneuver and. So she she never really figured it out. If she did, she never put it in practice. I'm so sorry. Oh, it I, happens. I, it's life. I wish she would have had the joy of knowing what a neat and tidy house was like. Well, people are going to think I'm crazy, but I talk to her once in a while. <laughs> Well, I'm sure she's looking over your shoulder now and she's cheering you on and she's she, saying, hey, go, Kara, this is awesome. Yeah. She was an amazing woman, really. She she worked full time. And during World War II, we lived on the farm and they had, uh, what do they call it when the army comes and bivouac, not bivouac, what do they call that? I lost the word. Anyway, the army was there down and she wrote poetry. So one of my next projects is to take her poetry and turn it into a book. Oh, wow. What an honor. And that's a way to respect her to me. She was a very romantic person, but you would have never known it. Well, one of the things that I like that you just said, and I think it's really important for us to pay honor to this is you said your mother lived a very full life. Mm -hmm. And even though she was a clutter bug her whole life and never figured out how to be organized, she figured out a lot of things like communication and the importance of family. And she wrote poems. She was, she was an amazing person as far as creativity goes. And yes. so it is possible to live a full and exciting life in spite of the fact that there's clutter. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I believe it is, but I think... Reducing the clutter has helped me, as the book says, organize, save time, save money, and love your home again. Mm -hmm. Because at times you just see it as being there. You don't love it. So well, now I love it. <laughs> Well, and as somebody that has seen both sides, you've seen the, the messy house and you've seen the house that is clutter free or it's more organized mm -hmm. and you're choosing, you're choosing intentionally. I, I like the other one better where I don't have to leave all this stuff to my kids. Right. And that's a sense of responsibility. That's important to me. And so what made you decide that? Just looking at the stuff. <laughs> I'm like, they don't want this. They don't want to deal with this. <laughs> so I should deal with it so they don't have to. It's a love of my kids that inspired well, that. One of the things that I know about my own personal junk, and I'm going to say junk because yeah, it me, sometimes junk. it's it's just junk to me. Sometimes I don't know what to do with it. And then I say, well, wait a second. If I don't know what to do with it and it's mine, what on earth is anybody else supposed to do with this stuff? Because if I don't know what to do with it, no one else is going to know what to do with it either. I I'm agree the best with that 100%. To make this decision. Right. And I, 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 I have some cool stuff that's it's really junk. And I was trying to get rid of it one day. And my husband says, don't get rid of that. That's still good. And I said, it is good. But let me ask you this question. Because this shirt that I'm trying to throw away, it doesn't fit me anymore. I will never wear it again. And if, and he's much larger than I am. I mm -hmm. said, if something were to happen to me, would you wear this shirt? He's like, no. <laughs> I said, well, what if I'm never going to wear it again, it? <laughs> right. If I'm never going to wear it again and you're never going to wear it, why do we have it? Right. Like let's, let's exactly. let this on its way. 
So. And the first day I worked on things, I went through my closet and I got rid of six boxes. Oh, wow. Of clothes that I had been holding on to because I might get in them again or might come back in style or whatever. And they don't. And you don't need that because I've got enough that I can go out and buy a shirt if I need a shirt. <laughs> so it helped. That day made a huge difference. Getting rid of six boxes Just getting, is huge. Yeah. And they were my clothes and my husband's clothes, so not all me. And I still have things I need to let go of, but you know how you have that favorite thing? <laughs> just one favorite thing, and <laughs> you just can't let it go. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about the one favorite thing. If you have okay. one favorite thing and it's only one, is it okay to keep it? That's hard to answer because if you <laughs> love it, <laughs> and see, I always thought, well, I can use it and put it in a quilt, mm. or I can sew something else with the fabric and I'll know I can make a pillow, or of course, I never do. And now that I have the trimmers, I, I don't sew much anymore. So I need to let go of a lot more. But you just made a really important correlation there. You said since you have the tremors and you're not sewing, that frees up a whole lot in your life where suddenly mm -hmm. you say, okay, well then if I'm going to have this made into a quilt, I'll probably outsource that to someone else. Yes. So holding on to that, that goes in a pile of I'm going to hire somebody to make that quilt or it's not going to get made. Therefore, I can get rid of that one thing. And I and think I'm more leaning toward it's not going to get made and just let go. <laughs> well, and as I started looking at my own life that way, I started having some really honest conversations with myself and about, hard. am I ever really going to do this? And I started looking at how I spend my time because I love to sew. And when I grew mm -hmm. up, I was going to be a, a, a clothing designer. That's what I was going to be when I grew up, not a house cleaning lady. <laughs> so <I know. laughs> as my eyesight got worse. I said to Mine myself, too. I just, I just don't see as well as I used to. And those stitches are really tiny, especially if you're trying to like unravel them. I can't them or... thread a needle. Yeah, I can't either. I can't thread the machine. Yeah, I can't either. So and what do I do? Tiny, Hire somebody tiny... to come and do that. Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ridiculous. But, but for me, I started looking at my free time. And I said, when nobody is around and I've got a Saturday to myself, do I sit down in front of the sewing machine? I'm like, I don't. Like you, no. I sit down in front of the computer and I'm typing and mm -hmm. I'm like, if I'm, if I'm actually writing and I'm creating something different than I am when I'm behind the sewing machine. You're still creating. I am, but I'm, I'm okay then to let go of the sewing machine and all of the fabric and all of the notions and all of the boxes of stuff that, you know, the right. stitch witchery and the fabric stuff and the little zippers and the, all the oh, stuff. Oh my gosh. I have if a I, room full. Do you? I just haven't had the nerve to tackle it yet. Well, but for me, it was a conscious decision because I was like, you know what? I'm not, if I'm not coming back this way, if I'm not mm -hmm. going to be sewing again, why am I saving all the stuff? And like you, if something happened to me, it would be my husband that had to go through all my stuff and then trying to make decisions on my sewing stuff. And like, like we talked about earlier, if I don't know what to do with it, he is not going to know what to do with it. You know, not a clue. Let alone My kids daughters and grandkids. Don't sew. They don't sew. They don't want it. I offered it to my niece, who is going to be a dress designer. She doesn't want to do quilts. And most of what I have is quilt fabric now, because I've been quilting for about 20 years. So it's time to let go of it. Now, I have two sets of fabric that I want a quilt for me because mm. I don't have a single quilt I've made. I've given them away and I've sold a few and I just don't have any. So I want those two, but otherwise I need to go up. It's upstairs. So I need to go upstairs and spend a week weeding out, finding out who I can donate it to or maybe a senior center or I don't know. I have to figure that out. 
Have you used Nextdoor at all? No, I haven't. So Nextdoor is an app and I found great success. I've been working with a lot of the ladies in the neighborhood on getting rid of some of their stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've had great success at taking a picture, like we'll take the fabric that we're not going to use and we'll right. put it in a box and we take it to the end of the driveway. If you can't get to the end of your driveway, we found putting it on the front porch works just as well. But what okay. we'll do is we'll stand back with a smartphone and we take a picture, like if it's at the end of the drive, that's right near the mailbox. So we mm -hmm. take a picture of the mailbox number so people know what house number it is. Where it is. And we've, we've got a picture of the house in the background. So it's this number on the mailbox in front of this house. And we, we take it so you can see the box at the end of the driveway. Then we put a note and we say, you know, six bolts of fabric or whatever it is. And we say, first come, first serve. And then we say no returns. Like, do not return it. If you change <laughs> no. your mind, <laughs> if you come and get it, it's yours. And if it's for sale, that's great. But if it's for free, we just say first come, first serve. And then we post it. And okay. I cannot tell you, I think the longest we've ever had something sit in the drive is 26 minutes. Really? That's it. Yeah, it's gone. Like that's people just amazing. come and snatch and what's it up. The night with the place. It's called nextdoor.com. And it's Next a marketplace door. that's connected to your neighborhood. So it's your neighborhood oh, and then good. like the neighborhoods outside of that. And I always go like it says, do you want all the neighborhoods to know about it or just your neighborhood? And I say, tell all the neighborhoods. Everybody. You know yeah. Let come everybody, and get it. Anybody can come get it. And I always make a note. There's no need to contact the homeowner. Like they don't need to text me back and go, is this no. for real? Just come get it. And there's no need for them to like knock on the door and go, are you sure you don't want those six bolts of fabric? Yeah, because come get you it. don't want to rethink it. <laughs> but uh, every single time, and we do this several times a year, we go through all the cupboards in the kitchen and we pull out all those pots and pans that we don't use that mm -hmm. were our mothers and our grandmothers and it was from the first marriage and it was a wedding gift or whatever. And we've had it for 20 years, but we've never actually used those pots and pans. We put mm -hmm. all that stuff in a box and we just take a picture of it. Like, Hey, we've got a whole bunch of pots and pans. If anybody has a, a kid going to college and needs some pots and pans sit at the end of the driveway, right. boom, here's the picture. Come get it. No returns. And it's that is a great really well. idea. I'm going to uh, check it and do that. We have a list, and I don't have it connected to this show, but we do have a list um, that I will leave links in this show when this is over, okay. of all of the um, the places that come and they pick up from mm -hmm. your home. And I know that okay. there are a lot of places that have a truck, and they will come pick it up right from your home if you're unable to get out and go to a donation center. So that's helpful as well. But. That lets you know how much fabric I have if it's going to take me a whole week. I mean, I have drawers and drawers and shelves and shelves. And so, yeah, that's a good idea. But having written a book and being dedicated and on this lifelong journey now to make a difference, I have no doubt that that week will, will be well spent as you go through some of those things. Well, another thing to say about my husband. He's read the book several times, and the first time he read through it, it inspired him to clean up his office. <laughs> and I was so happy. <laughs> Three cheers for him. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Great job. So uh, Bianca says, uh, Blanca, Blanca Tapausko says, thank you for saying, if I don't know what to do with it, then I shouldn't expect my husband and sons to know what to do with the excessive stuff. And thank you for bringing that up. It is so important for us to realize that sometimes, not easy, but sometimes we are the best person to actually make that decision on what happens to our stuff. Yep. And Kathy says, I inherited four huge steamer trunks from generations of family. I'm finally at the point that I'm going through them and I'm getting rid of items. Kathy, good on you. That's so yes. inspiring. I love that. It's not easy, especially when they're inherited no, from not. other uh, family members. Uh, Kay says, I have my mom's old heavy sewing machine in addition to my machine, and I'm trying to find someone to give it to. That's great. Um, I think I have a niece who's going to get my sewing machine. Oh, that would be so awesome. She likes to sew. So I, she could do that even if she doesn't do the quilt thing. And she would probably really appreciate the sewing machine. 
I know when I was young, I wanted a new sewing machine and I didn't have the money for one. And so I used the one at the local community college until I could afford one. Ah. And then one one day I got a roommate and the roommate had a sewing machine. I was like, oh, a sewing machine in my house. I know. (laughs) Super cool. I learned to sew on a treadle machine. Oh, wow. (laughs) I was five. Was it a singer? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had it now. My just, my just mother put had in a, the living room or something. You know. My mother had a treadle machine, and it was mm-hmm. it was so awesome. And it folded up into the cabinet. And you open yep. it up, and yeah, oh, that was awesome. Um, so now that you've written a book, how has your life changed in terms of being aware of the things that you bring into your house? Oh, I don't buy nearly as many items <laughs> or junk as I used to. If I travel, I don't have to bring everything home <laughs> from the trip. So I don't have to have that kind of uh, stuff. So when you go shopping, what is different? Do you use a shopping list or do you do you know exactly what you're going to buy before you buy it? Or do you just not impulse buy? Like, what is your process? I do not impulse buy very often. And if I do, it's something that I've forgotten. I really and truly wanted and needed. So I don't, when I do grocery shopping, I make a list, I order online. So it's all there. I don't pick things off the shelves and just a lot of things like that help. My kitchen's not so cluttered and my food stores are not humongous anymore. They're just what I need. And so do you have any rules about stuff that is not allowed to come into the house? Like I have a rule mm-hmm. and my rule is a five minute rule. If I need something and this is goes into impulse buy. If I walk past something in a store and I'm like, oh, I got to have that. I have to stop and ask myself, did you need that item five minutes ago? And the answer is usually like, no, I didn't. So Um, I don't need it now. Can you live another five minutes without it? And oftentimes I'm caught up in the moment. I'm like, no, I got to have it right now. Well, I do ask those kind of questions. If I didn't need it five minutes ago, chances are you can probably live with it forever without it. Walk away. And I make myself walk away. So I I ask myself the five minute rule. I've cut down to one purse. (laughs) I don't have to change things out all the time. Yeah, that was a great move because I had like 20. (laughs) So every time you change clothes, you got to change a purse and you got to move everything. I don't do that anymore. So I was saving time. It's all in one purse. And it's a purse that'll go with anything I wear. And yeah, so tell I me about that. that. Tell me about that. You consolidated the wardrobe by by getting rid of all the purses and just choosing purses one. Purses and shoes. It's black. It's black. I can carry it with everything. I can carry it with flip-flops. I can carry it with, well, I can't wear heels. But I can carry it with dress shoes or whatever. It's black and it goes with anything. And so how about your shoes? You threw shoes in there. Do you just have black shoes? Oh, I had like 10 pairs of tennis shoes. So now I just have two. <laughs> okay, so you got and comfortable shoes that will go with the black shoe, purse. And one is some nice tennis shoes I could wear to my grandson's baseball game. Or Yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. It's made so, life so less complicated. Because you don't have to stop and think, what purse do I want to carry? Uh huh. What and am so I is wearing? It, is it just the purse, or have you consolidated in other areas as well, like bathrooms? Oh, bathrooms, definitely. I had boxes of shampoo and conditioner and soaps, and and of course I traveled when I worked, and I have had had all these tiny soaps and shampoos and things in a basket, it's gone. 
That is so tempting. You go into yes. a hotel and they've got like and a little shampoo and a conditioner and it's free. It's right there. It's included in your stay. And I you're can like, take it else? home and give it to the grandkids. Or I That can, was nice you know, soap. Let me take that home. Yeah. And then we end up taking it home Smells and not so using good. it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. When it sits in the basket. But so, yeah, I quit doing that. And of course, the hotels have helped a lot because now they put the the big bottles with the push thing on them in the uh -huh. shower so you don't take them with <laughs> oh that's so nice but i got rid of the ones i had well and for me that was i traveled a lot as well because i would run around the country and i would train cleaning companies in different places mm -hmm. around the country and so every time they would put me up in a hotel and there would be all these little goodies that were there and i started saying to myself i don't use this brand at home so if I take this home, I'm not going to use it at home because I have a different brand that I prefer when I'm at home. Yeah. And so don't don't take them if you're Just not going to use they're them. they're there. Yeah. Right. And so I, I remember on a recent trip, I made a really tough decision because I had torn my fingernail and they had this little free fingernail file that was part of the little goodies. There's a, like a shower cap and some shampoo and a fingernail yeah. file. And I looked at the fingernail file. I was like, that's exactly what I need. And I, I can keep this one. And then I was like, do I need it? And I was like, yes, I do. So I was like, okay, I'm going to leave everything else, but I'm going to take the fingernail file because I actually need this one. So I did. I used it. And I was so grateful that it was there. And then I left everything else. When I came back the next day, because like you leave for the day and they come and they tidy mm -hmm. up your room, there's like another set and of And they give everything. you another one. Yeah. Plus all the ones from yesterday. And but I was see, like, I fooled myself by saying, <laughs> oh, I'll take it home and give it to the grandkids. But I never uh, did. Yeah. Well, so for so me, then I was like, whoa, I got two days worth of stuff here and I didn't need the first day. So then I just left it all there and I just kept scooping it over into the you. corner. Like yeah. y'all can just, just pick it up when you're done. Cause I don't need all of these. I don't need all of yesterday's. I don't need all of today's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's very good, but that's so, true. So what other rules do you have? Uh, you mentioned earlier about sorting through a junk drawer. What rules do you have when going through a junk drawer and deciding what to keep inside that drawer and what to throw out? What have I used? Mm. What serves a purpose? I mean, I the first thing, well, I said the first thing I did was get rid of the six boxes, but actually I cleaned out my desk drawer. And it had everything in it from a pack of crackers to... My desk had peanut butter on it, sitting in the corner for the crackers. And <laughs> it was a mess. So the first thing I actually did was my desk. And I thought, this is a good start. And that day, that's all I did. I cleaned out the desk drawer, and I cleaned off the top. Now oh. I get papers everywhere because I'm writing, and I'm writing down ideas and stuff. I'm you know, trying to get used to using the computer more and writing fewer notes. That was a real change for me as a writer. Mm -hmm. That was a real change for me because I, I, to this day, I mean, I shouldn't confess, but I got a notepad right here in front of me in case some kind of crazy idea pops out at me and I got a pen in my hand. I can just make a note as oh, I go. And see, that's what I thought of before we got on the call. Should I get some paper for notes or, and then I did, I just said, well, no. For me, that's my security blanket. But as soon as I start writing a note, and this is true for me for now, because I'm trying to go paperless. And the mm -hmm. only paper I have in my entire house and my entire office is this notepad right here in front of me. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. But here's the catch. As soon as I start writing my note, I will freeze and say, why are you writing that note? And then it's because I want to remember it. Do you? Yes, I do. Okay, so where are you going to go to look for this note when you need it? And I'm like, I'm going to go to a Google Keep file. Okay, so don't write it down. Go to the Google Keep file and put it away right now inside that Google Keep file. Yes. And name it something that you will remember. So if That's this is key. <laughs> if this is notes from Kara Kendall, then I need to make a keep file that says Kara Kendall notes on it or things that I learned from Kara Kendall so that when I go looking for that, I'm going to go, you know what? I had this great conversation with Kara Kendall. Where am I going to go to find those notes? It is not going to be on a, a notepad. It's going to be on a Google keep file that's on my computer that I can search for very quickly because yeah. once these notepads are filled up, 
and they get stacked up on top of each other, how will I you ever never find that note it. again? I will never you find the never note again. Look at it. And so I'm training myself to, even if it's a note, like organizing my notes so that I can find them again if I need them. And it's I'm I really, still training myself to. It's crazy. To. But that's exactly what if, and this is just a weird concept, but based on that, that idea, what mm -hmm. if all of our clothing was categorized so that we knew, like, I can just jump on the computer and do a quick search and it will tell me exactly where that shirt is, when it was last washed, is it clean, what size is it, is it ready? We would have everything at our fingertips, right? And that's yeah. not what we do. We go in and no. we've got a whole stack of pants that are in our closet. We're like, oh man, I got to try on all those pants. So you're looking. I, yeah, I don't know if they fit me or not. And we do this before every trip. Like if we're going on mm -hmm. a trip, my husband will pull out that stack of clothes and then he goes and he does like a fashion show. He tries them all on. And then he'll <laughs> come in and he'll say, does this make me look fat? You know, and then like, is this going to look good if this shows up in a picture or whatever? And but he has to try them all on because we don't have any way of knowing if it's a current outfit or if it's one from like you said way back when two years ago or ten years ago. Yeah. I had I had a suit when I worked that was my customer suit that I would put on for meetings. It was purple, and I loved it. And it was in one of those six boxes I got rid of because it was a size six. And there's no way I could get in that. Nor well, do I hope to ever get in that. It, it sounds like a lovely suit, but you probably made the right decision because it nobody's was wearing because suits it's right out now. of style. And yeah. Well, and I know for me, the 80s was a really fun time. And like yes. my hair today, we just, we made our bangs go up and then like we sprayed them while we were hair and blowing the them with the hair dry. Back. Yeah, we had like big, tall hair that was, you know, woo. Shoulder and, pads. Yes. And those big balloon pants and yeah. flowers on everything. And I had a lot of clothes that made me really happy from the 80s. And I hung on to it way too long. And <laughs> <laughs> as I as I started cleaning out my closets, I asked myself this question. I said, is this outfit something that I'm running towards or something that I'm running from? And I'd say, oh, I'm running from the 80s, not towards it. Okay, great. Let's get yeah. rid of all the 80s clothes, all the 90s clothes, all the 2020 clothes, because we're not going in that direction. That's in the past. We're running I, from that, not running towards it. Very good. I'm going to have and to that, keep that in mind and go through my closet again. That was our barometer. If this is something I'm not running towards, ah, out it goes. I agree. And I do talk in the book some about organizing your closet, put all your jackets together, put all your pants together, or code by color in the closet, shirts, however, however makes sense to your brain. And for your brain, what makes more sense? Is it by category or by color? Category. I like to keep all my shirts together, my t-shirts together, my pants together. So that works for me, but I don't try to tell anybody through the book that that's how it has to be done. I want to give them options in the book so that they can pick what fits for them because our brains don't work the same. Well, I know for me, I, I grew up in a home with seven girls. There are seven mm -hmm. of us girls and we shared each other's clothing. And so yeah. I didn't really have any of my own clothing. And so when we I moved out on my own, I was like, whoa, I got my own space now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy all kinds of clothes for myself. You watch me go. I'll make my own clothes or I'll buy my own clothes. And I just bought tons of clothes. And I was really into clothes. But it became kind of a, a, a dumb thing when I realized that I have so many clothes that if I wore a different outfit every single day, it would take me more than a year to mm -hmm. even wear all my clothes only once. Like, what is that? And I'm storing all these clothes that are quickly out of date. And then they may or may not fit me when I try to wear them again. And so I simplified my life. I'm like, well, that doesn't really speak to my life. I mean, I'm a house cleaner and I wear the same uniform every day. Most of what I wear is like this, right? Mm -hmm. I got like a few of these shirts, but that's pretty much all I wear. 
So I consolidated. And what I said was, if I'm going out, I'm going out with friends, I'm going to a wedding or a funeral or something fancy, I'm probably going to get by in a little black dress. I can probably get by with a half dozen little black dresses of different mm -hmm. styles and personalities. Right. I, I can get by with a shelf of you know, clothes that all kind of look the same. And I, I, I have this, I'll show you this and don't make fun of me, but this is my closet. And so I got all the blue shirts. It reminds the... me of Monk. <laughs> Did you ever a watch Monk? Monk? <laughs> I love Monk, yeah. <laughs> His closet looked like that. It was like suits and they but, were all the same. But it made it so easy for me because what, and what we're seeing in this picture, and this is funny, I'll explain it, but I've got size four, size six, size eight. And then in the pants, five, size four, four size six, six and size eight. eight. And those are the only sizes I keep. So my norm is about a six. And if I lose a little bit, I'm a size four. And if I gain a little bit, I'm a size eight. And that's true for the shirts and the pants. So I always have yeah. the skinny and the fat clothes all there in the same, the same wardrobe. And if yeah. I'm a little big or small, but I got rid of all the size 12s and the size 16s and the size zeros and, and everything yeah. that wasn't in that range. And then I got rid of all the extras. And like you, I do the, the comfortable tennis shoes and mm -hmm. I wear indoor shoes. So I wear like indoor shoes in my house. So I always have the foot support right. and the arch support and all that stuff. And then if I go out, I got black shoes on and a black handbag. And so I just I'm a got barefoot the girl from the farm. So there I hardly go. ever have shoes on. <laughs> but so finding that's when I decided I don't need all these shoes because yeah. I prefer not to have shoes on. <laughs> well, and if you have a preference and mm -hmm. if you have a process, it makes streamlining everything so easy because what happens for me is this, and this is kind of a weird byproduct of my streamlining my closet. Mm -hmm. When I go into a store and I see a yellow sweatshirt on sale, it now would never cross my mind to buy it. Is it a blue shirt? No. Is it a little black dress? No. Uh, not for me. Do I need it? No. Yeah, no. And it, just because there's cool stuff on sale, it's not cool for me because that doesn't fit into my pattern, right? Right. That's, those are good points. I still need to learn. Um, Kathy says, my goal is to create a capsule wardrobe. And I think a capsule wardrobe is something like what we're speaking about, where you're you're consciously making the decision. A Rashi right. says, A Rashi says, my parents write stuff on pieces of paper, but don't have a spot to keep any of them. When I ask them where they'd look for the info, they have no idea. Mm -hmm. And I think that is typical of so many people. I know it was for me. I'd written all me these too. great ideas down. But that if I didn't index them by putting them on the computer where I could search with one keyword and find it. Right. That's me. And what I'm using now to organize my notes and things is OneNote. Yes. And you can create separate files and different pages in the files. And all I have to go go to is one note and go down the line and I can find it. So um, I'm working on it. But last week I did take a page full of notes and you don't want to see it. It's already in the trash. So. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I love, and this is, I also used one note. I used to use one note for all my notes and I switched over to Google keep for this reason. If you're not familiar with Google keep, Google Keep is absolutely free. It's part of the Chrome. And if you go to your um, Google Keep, there's a little tiny keypad up in the corner and it mm -hmm. has nine little dots. And if you click on those nine little dots, it opens up a window and it has all the Google products in it. And in the Google products, there's a little tiny yellow app with a little light bulb on it. Wow. <clears throat> that, that light bulb is Google Keep. Here's why I like it. I can write notes on a, a legal pad. And I can take a picture with my smartphone and it will go straight to my Google Keep. And it translates it all into text like it types it up for me. And I'm like, whoa, that's nice. And that's so excellent. instead of me trying to retype it now into my computer or into my notes or hitting the voice recorder and trying to record those by hand, if I have made some notes, I can take a snapshot with my camera and immediately it will go to the Google Keep. Here's where it gets exciting. With the bottom of the Google Keep, there are three dots, those three little dots where you can like right. do stuff. 
Um, one of those is you can add check boxes to it. So imagine I need a grocery list. Instead of making a grocery list on my legal pad, I can make a grocery list right on Google Keep, or I can make it on a legal pad, take a picture of it, and it goes to Google Keep. Then I can turn it into check boxes. With the check boxes, if I check it off, it doesn't erase it. It sends it to the bottom of the page. Then if I ever want to use that same checklist again, I uncheck it and it goes back up to the top of the list. So imagine my grocery list. Check this out. This is so cool. My grocery list has all the things we normally eat. And mm -hmm. as I want to send, oh, my husband to the store, not me, I add his email to the bottom of the checklist mm -hmm. and it automatically shares it to his Google. So now it's on his phone. So instead of him texting me saying, hey, I'm at the store, do we need anything? He can open up the file and we call it groceries. So he opens <laughs> up the groceries file and it has all the things we need, bananas, eggs, whatever, all the way down the list. And as he puts them in his cart, he checks them off the list. So I don't need to micromanage. I don't need to wonder, did he buy them while he was at the store? I open the file and I look at all this stuff that's checked off. And I'm like, well, I guess that's what we have. He and got so, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we run out, like let's say he's at work and I used up all the last of the eggs, I go to the checklist and I uncheck it and it goes back up to the top again. So now next time he's out grocery shopping, he looks at the list, he's, oh, I guess we need eggs again. So it saves us from all this back and forth. Oh, I forgot to get this at the grocery. Do we need this at the grocery? And it's it's all right there. And I love I it for that reason. This. Here's the really cool part. It also lets you do hyperlinks like if I was going to buy something specific and maybe there's a, a coupon online, I can either mm -hmm. take a picture and you can add pictures to the Google Keep file or I can link to the discount. Like let's say, for example, they had price matching. And mm -hmm. what what is that website where they're doing price matching? I can link it right there. So he gets to the counter and he says, hey, I would like to, to have you price match this. And they're like, oh, show us the price match. He clicks one link and boom, you're on the website there. with that. Yeah, it's right there. So I love the Google Keep file for that thing. And once I discovered it, I was like, oh, wait a second. I, ca I can't go back to a regular checklist. <laughs> no, so, I can see it, that. That's wonderful. I'm going to try it. But it's absolutely free. And the cool part about it is because it's part of Google, it mm -hmm. is available on every device. You get it on your on your iPad. You got it on your computer. You got it on your, your smartphone. And so yeah. whatever it is you're using, and then here's what's really cool. Here's what's really cool. Let's say, for example, that my husband is out of town and I'm on conference calls this week and I don't get to go shopping myself. I can hire somebody to do my shopping. I just add their email to the bottom and boom, they've got my, and my checklist. The list. And then when they check it off, I can, I don't know micromanaging. I can just see, oh, look, these are all the things that they've checked off as they put them in their, their shopping cart. Okay, great. They picked up everything I need. Yay. That's great. It's made delegating so that easy. That is amazing. It's changed my life. Yeah. yeah I didn't mean to I'm go off on a tangent, right. but no, that's good organizing. <laughs> well, and speaking of organizing, uh, for those of you that are just joining us, I want to thank you so much uh, for being with us today. This is Kendall, uh, Kara Kendall, and she's the author of the book, Organizing Your Home. Going from being a hoarder and cluttering, uh, cluttering her whole entire life to having solutions that can make your life a whole lot easier. So I'm super excited that we were able to have her join us today. Um, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners as they're going from clutter to organization on their journey, other than just getting a copy of your book and making it part of their reference library? Right. That would be number one. Number two, <laughs> don't give up. Do what you can do in a day. Schedule things and try to keep your schedule. Knowing that emergencies come up and things have to slip and change. And just keep going. It's worth it. Well, and if I heard one message from you today, and I just kind of want to highlight it as we say goodbye to everybody today, that would be don't be too hard on yourself and know that it is a process that's not going to happen overnight. But if you mm -hmm. stick with it and you're consistent in your progress, that you will see um, progress over time. Right. And be forgiving of yourself. 
Otherwise, you'll just want to throw up your hands and quit. And we don't want that. We want you to keep going <laughs> at your own pace, in your own time, and in your own method. Because so many people say, okay, do this within a month or whatever. I want you to find your pace and go at your own pace. Because I know I can't go at somebody else's pace. I know what I can achieve. You have to figure that out by talking to yourself and asking yourself questions. Honest well, th questions. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, CM says you're brilliant. New subscriber here. And Muppet 929 says thanks for the stream. You guys, thanks so much for being here today. This was the highlight of my day. I've really enjoyed you guys. And thank you so much, Kara Kendall, for joining us. This was Thank this was you nice. for having me. I've, I've truly enjoyed the whole time. Awesome. Thanks again. We'll talk to you.